hi welcome back to my channel today I am going to go over how to make your own silicone mold so there has been so much back and forth trying to figure out how to do this as you all know I make my own concrete containers for my candles and for planters and a lot of different other items and I purchase my molds from different places like Amazon most of them are from Amazon, but there are a lot of different places that you can purchase molds from. Well, one big question I got from the concrete community and just my own question in general, how can I make my own? How can I come up with my own design and my own mold? Well, we figured it out. <laughs> I actually collaborated with a company, it's called HTV Rant, and they sell silicone mold gel and I actually created my own silicone mold and I was able to make a unique custom concrete container for my business out of this mold. So I'm very excited to share that with all of you today. If you are new to my channel, my name is Kayla. I make videos all about concrete, candles, and crafts. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss out on any of the new videos I post in the future. So let's go ahead and jump into this. I'm going to go over step-by-step step how I made this mold, and then I'm also going to create a concrete container out of that mold to show you how the mold held up. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this is the silicone mold making kit from HTV Rant. As you can see, it's toxic-free and odor-free. Inside of the box, I already took everything out. Um, but inside of the box, I'll show you what came with it. So this is A and B, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so you just mix them both together. That's the silicone gel. And then these are some gloves to protect your hands. So that's everything that came in the box. Now, some things that you'll need on the side, you'll need a solo cup so you can mix A and B together. And then you'll also need um, just kind of like a stirring stick so you can stir them both together. You'll want to stir quite a bit to make sure it's mixed well. Now you'll also need something to put your um, container in that you're going to put the silicone gel around. So I'm using this old Tupperware and then for my container, this is a little succulent planter that I got that I absolutely love and thought was super cute. So I'm gonna take the little succulent out and then we are going to make the mold from this container. I do have some wipes here because after I take the plant out of the container, I'm gonna need to wipe it out before we pour the gel inside. So I went ahead and took out the plant and washed around it. It does have this hole on the bottom, uh, which is totally fine. And so we're gonna take our Tupperware and we're gonna place it in. So you wanna have it facing up so that way the gel goes around it. And you wanna have the base of the container on the bottom. And then just make sure whatever container you choose to go around uh, your sample, as you can say. Um, the container we're gonna make the sample out of. Just make sure that you can have the gel cover it completely. Um, you don't want the container not to be completely covered by the gel. So we're gonna go ahead and mix A and B together. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio, super easy. So if you were just doing something smaller and you weren't using all of it, then you would obviously do you know half of A and half of B, just a, an equal amount. So you wanna take this plastic lid off first, and then I'm pouring in A first, and then I'll pour in B after. So I have a feeling that I am not gonna have enough room here. So I am actually going to pour as much as I can in just to see if we can get it. If not, I'm gonna go grab a different container uh, that we can mix all of it together. We want enough room so we can completely mix this together. 
And as I thought, we didn't have enough room, so I had to get another container, but that's okay. If that happens to you, just make sure that you take a stick or some kind of stirring tool to get all of the gel out of the cup because um, we don't want to miss any of the ratio. So I'm just gonna pour the rest of B in there so we can make sure we have all the gel we need. And then we're just gonna stir. So you wanna stir a lot. Um, I stirred here for a good three minutes and you just wanna make sure that everything is stirred well, it's combined, um, and that it's set a little bit before you pour it into your mold. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and put the silicone gel, gel in. Make sure you have it facing up and not down. You want the base of your mold to actually be the top, if that makes sense. At the end of this video, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so when you pour in, I started in the middle and then just kind of went around and you wanna go slow. And then you just wanna make sure it fills all the way to the top. If your container is a lot taller than your mold, then really, I mean, you don't have to pour all the way to the top. You can just make sure that your sample or the container you're making the mold from is completely covered. And as you can see, that's completely covered. Now I'm gonna drop it on the table just cause I want all those bubbles to come out. And I let this set for a good six to seven hours before I even started messing with it. Um, after I touched it, it did seem like it wasn't completely set. So I would let this set for at least 12 hours. Um, 12 to 24 is the sweet spot. So what I did is this is an old Tupperware. So that's why I used it because I knew I was gonna have to cut this open. Um, so I'm just using needle nose pliers and I'm really just prying this open. But you, what you wanna do is you just wanna cut one side. You don't need to really do anything crazy. Just cut one side so you can peel it off and it'll pop right out. If you have a Tupperware that's a little bit not so um, hard to bend, like if you have one that's a little more flexible, then you could definitely use that without having to crack it open like this. All right, so here is our mold. So we gotta take our container out. Um, so I'm just gonna cut the bottom, just cut around so that way we have a nice hole that we can pour our concrete into and then we can get our container out. All right, so I'm just popping this container out. Not gonna lie, it was really hard to get the middle piece out, but it wasn't the silicone gel. It was actually the container I chose because it kind of had that um, lip on the inside. So if you do choose to, a container, um, I would recommend kind of a straight inside to make it a little easier for you, but it still worked and it looks awesome. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and use our silicone mold. So this is the bowl I use to pour my concrete in. I use Direct Colors Concrete Pigment. I'm gonna use blue today. And then just a little cup to have my concrete in. And then some water. You're also gonna want a stirring stick to stir your concrete, gloves, and a mask. And then obviously your silicone mold. Now 
Now we're gonna go ahead and get this poured. I use cement all, um, so it's a concrete mix that you can get on any home improvement store. So I just used a half a cup of one of those solo cups of concrete, and then I'm just gonna use a quarter teaspoon of blue. And the ratio that I use for my water for concrete is three to one. So three parts concrete, one part water. And I just add water slowly so that way I can eyeball it. With this blue, you really don't need to add that much. Um, the blue really helps it uh, thin out. Now you want it to have kind of like a pancake batter consistency when you're done. I wanted to add a little bit more blue just because I wanted a little bl more blue color to the container. So I went ahead and added a little bit more blue and that's why I like to just eyeball it. So that way I can make it the way I, I really want it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and pour in. So this container I noticed at the top, um, it was a little bit shallow. So I just wanted to make sure that I made it thin, but not too thin. So I did add a little bit of concrete in there to thicken it up, but I wanted it a little bit more thin for this mold. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour in a little bit at a time and then tap the sides to make sure that it completely gets into that mold. And honestly, I probably should have cut off a little bit more on the top and I probably will before I use this mold again um, because it will help the concrete go down a little bit smoother and it's the bottom of the container. So it's not too concerning, you know, how that lip's gonna look there. And just keep tapping the sides, making sure that you're getting all those air bubbles out. And we're gonna let this set for about an hour to an hour and a half before we demold it. All right, so it sat for a few hours, so we're just gonna go ahead and demold. I'm just pulling back the mold right now, and then I'm going to peel off the bottom part, the sharp, sharp parts that we don't need, that were just kind of there from the mold. And then once I get all those off, I will go ahead and roll back the mold and pop out our new container. And it's really cool because the silicone gel actually picked up on the design of the little container that I have. Um, so it's really, it has a nice attention to detail on there. Now the hole on the bottom didn't come through, but I think that's because I filled up the mold um, to the very, very tippy top. So if you wanted to keep that hole, you can keep it a little less shallow, or a little more shallow, and then that hole will show. But this container turned out really cute. I love how the mold reacted and how the concrete reacted with it. So I'm just taking a sanding block here and just sanding the bottom because it was a little sharp from the concrete. And this is an 80 grit sandpaper in case any of you were curious. So one tip when you're sanding, just make sure that you are holding it at an angle and be careful not to sand the side of your container. Um, if the concrete starts to get sanded on the side, it'll actually start making scruffs, like scruff marks on the side and it won't look good. So you just wanna make sure that you're holding your sandpaper and at an angle to make sure that you're just getting the bottom portion 
and not the actual side of the container. All right, so this is how it turned out. And I love how the silicone mold, it's so durable. Um, the gel really did a good job uh, in hardening up and making this attention to detail mold. I absolutely love the detail that came out. Now, when you have this mold, make sure you don't leave it inverted and you keep it like this. Um, I have had molds in the past break from keeping them inverted when not using them. Alright, so I just wanted to show you kind of a comparison between two different molds. So this is the mold I'm literally trying to tear it and it's not tearing. This is a mold I got off Amazon. They are nice, don't get me wrong. I use them all the time, but they are easy to tear, as you can see. <laughs> so I wanted to show you, they are nice molds, the Amazon ones are. However, this silicone gel is really, really durable. I couldn't even tear it or anything. Now, once again, um, be sure when, this is what I was saying, inverted, don't leave it like this uh, when you're not using it. So you want to have it the right way um, when it's not in use, just so it doesn't fold on itself and end up breaking. And you can always cut a little bit more on the bottom here. I'm probably gonna do that when I use this mold next. But here's how the container turned out. And again, on the bottom, if you don't fill it up as much, you won't have that lip at the bottom. Now I went ahead and washed this silicone too, just to see how it would perform with Dawn soap and water and all the black and everything from my workstation rubbed off. So that's perfect. And here's the final product from succulent planter to silicone mold to concrete container. All right, so that was my video on the silicone gel for the mold and how to make your own mold. I would highly recommend this gel. It's so durable. I love how it turned out. It made such a cute little container that I can use now for a succulent or a candle, whatever I'd like. And to think that it came from a little succulent container. I actually got this for my sister-in-law's bridal shower and I just thought it would be so cute as a little, little tea light and it was right. And you can even see the, the design right here you can even see the little detail so the gel even picked up that little detail so I would highly recommend this gel for anyone that is looking to make their own containers for candles planters whatever you are making now the HTV run is running a sale so check the description box below check the dates I will have those there I will also have the link to their website they also have a campaign link that's a separate link I'll put on there and it's a membership to their HTV Rant for their products. You can get special discounts and learn more about that in the link below. Now, if this video is helpful for you, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so that way I know this type of content is helpful. And I am so happy that I was able to finally figure out how to do a silicone mold and I am most likely going to be purchasing more so that way I can make bigger ones and I am very excited about this new journey. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see all of you in the next video.